What's up guys, Alvaro here from Particle School and in this tutorial I'll show you how to fracture objects with fan. I'll show you an example very similar to this one from Jorge Ivanovich. So let's start. On this scene I have uh, these two tubes and they are animated like this. I will decrease my timeline a little bit. I'll make it something around 72 and I'll switch the real time on and so we have the two tubes here and we have the torus which is our donut and uh, we have a ground plane which is hidden so our fam can can interact with it and the auto dop network uh, Let's start creating a copy of the Taurus object. Let's call this Taurus uh, low res one and this other the high res one. So let's hide the hide the high res one for now and then we can work work with a very with a very low res here on this one and then uh, kind of rig here we use this high res one with the low res simulation it's very useful so let's start first of all let's make this low res torus a fractured solid object if it is already a organic object you can just select it and apply the fractured on top of it but if it's not you can just apply the fractured and it will work just fine as you can see, it created a lot of fractures here. So let's go inside our Taurus object and have a look on our chain here. Uh, it added all the usual FEM stuff and then a solid fracture. And you can control the size of your fractures here. I'll keep it around 0 0.4 for now. It looks really fine. Try not to work with very low risk because like very low fragments because it doesn't look really good like a lot of pieces flying around and let's see how it goes so it's not interacting with the tubes yet because the tubes have no it's not a static object yet so when you work with uh, animated objects in, in fact um, in conjunction with uh, FEM, you have to make it a deforming collider. So you just select your two tubes and click on the deforming collider. If it was static, you should work with the rigid collider. The, rig the rigid collider works for static objects and the deforming collider works for animated objects. And it's simple as it is. Now, if I press play, it's already interacting, but it's not ripping yet. And as you can see, uh, it, it's kind of intersecting here because we have a really high res simulation going on right now. So here on the auto dop network, let's make the sub steps something like five. And now it will take a bit longer, but it will be much more, it will have much more accuracy. So here inside, now inside of the AutoDop network, we can control if it's fracturing or not, because as you can see, it's not really fracturing. It's, let's see, it might fracture at some point, but I would like it to be fractured already. So I'll get back to the first frame of simulation. And here inside of the auto dop network, I'll press L to organize it a bit better. Give more room here. And let's find our torus. So the torus is here. And right here, we have the enable fracture. It's on now. And we have this fracture threshold. So with lower values, it will fracture easily. So let's keep it like zero, 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 one and see what happens. I'll press the up arrow key. And now it's 
mm, it's fragmenting too easily. So I'll take one zero out and try it again. Just press the up arrow key to simulate and control up arrow key to get back to the first frame. Um, not cool. So let's try something in the in betweens. So zero five here. Yeah, it looks nice. You can play with those values. If you change this stiffness, you have to work with completely different values. And also, if you increase the sub steps, it kind of gets a bit more rigid. It will not fragment that easily. So every parameters that you change, it will change everything. But now let's, uh, you couldn't like actually render this. It's kind of ugly with all those fragments. It's very low risk too. If you look inside all those, points here. So let's link it with the high restores. So I'll select the high restores here and have a look on it. In fact, let's hide the low restores and unhide the high res one. And let's actually make it a bit high res. So let's see it with wire and Let's increase these columns and these rows. And yeah, okay. So what we have to do, you have this option here, embed high res. And how does this work? You first select, you make sure you have nothing selected here or the high res, I will keep it with nothing selected for now. And I will click on this option. It will ask here, select geometry, no, no, no. It means that you have to, sele to select the high res one. So I'll select the high res one here and then press enter. If you press enter here, it will go inside of the torus. You don't want this. You have to put your arrow here, your mouse arrow here on the viewport and then press enter. And now you have to select the lower stars. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's see. Yeah, now let's simulate it again. So first you select the high res, press enter, and then select the low res and press enter. It automatically hide the low res stars and it keep only the high res stars uh, showing. Now, as you can see here, it's breaking right on the polygons. We don't want that. And also, it doesn't have volume, as you can see here. So how can we fix this? Inside the high restores, between the doping part and the torus, you can add a remesh. So I'll press tab and enter remesh here. And let's here on adaptive, let's increase this density. Not too much. I'll keep it on five. Five. Um, try not to make it too high risk because it, it kind of slows down a lot your stuff. Let me just see something here. Smooth shaded. As you can see, we got some marks here, so we can just increase this smoothing option. And it kind of get a bit better. As you can see in this example, he's using this texture here. It kind of hits those artifacts. Mm, I think he used it for that. And that gives you a better, some better cuts. What the fuck? Okay, not sure what's going on here. Let's 
Resetter simulation and let's take the remesh out. Ah, okay, I mm. Okay, I got some random rotation here. Not sure why. So I'll hit it. Hide it. Mm, yeah, it's now, it's okay. So let's put our remesh here back again. And I'll simulate it. Okay, as you can see here, we're getting some much nicer edges, but it's still hollow. So let's tetrahedralize this just inside the high restores. Let's add a tetrahedralize. And let's add here a clip just to see how things are going inside of our torus. I will change this to below plane. Yeah, might be the way I've rotated the other one. So I will enable the wire shaded and check it out. We have some high, uh, small tetrahedrons here on the edges and bigger ones here. The smaller ones here are because of my remesh. If I decrease this density to something like one and get back here, you might notice that we have bigger, bigger ones here as well. So let's bring it back to five. Let's in fact keep it on three so it doesn't get too slow. And as you can see, it's fine. And here we have bigger ones in the middle. To make smaller ones, you just have to... If you don't want to see this cage that we see... The fuck, it's too slow. Um, see this cage, you just have to click here. And then when you see the parameters, you click out of it. And you will still see the parameters. Just change this maximum volume constraint to uniform and then you can decrease this number here don't drag this slider because it might get too slow just click here on somewhere in between and you might notice some that your tetrahedrons will get smaller that's a better resolution but it will take takes more time so i'll keep it like this and then i'll shake this clip out of the way i will activate the dop import I'll press the U key to go up. I'll deselect everything, make it smooth shaded. I'll zoom out it and save it. And then simulate it. Now it might take some time. So yeah, as you can see, we got a better resolution here it's not like the best resolution ever but if you want even better resolution you just have to increase the the, 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 increase the number of tetrahed tetrahedrons and the size of it here so yeah that's it thanks for watching bye